That wraps it up for the news at 5 today, but don't go away. The Channel 4 News at 6 begins right now. Live from NBC4, this is the Channel 4 News at 6. The race to recall Governor Davis, the election just 53 days away, but now a late development as a federal judge in Northern California is warning that he could postpone the election. Once again, a good evening. I'm Chuck Henry. And I'm Michelle Ruiz. We begin here at 6 o'clock with this historic recall election. It is scheduled for October 7th, but there are concerns about the voting process, and a federal judge has a warning tonight. Channel 4's Patrick Healy here now with the latest. Patrick. Michelle, Chuck, we need to emphasize this is not a done deal, but relatively tiny Monterey County could be the tail wagging the dog and force the statewide recall election to be delayed till next March. The federal judge indicated that could be his ruling, but he's not ready to make it. Arguing before a federal judge in San Jose, attorneys for civil rights groups contend the election must be delayed for a number of reasons, among them that Monterey County has violated the Federal Voting Rights Act by making unapproved changes. They must pre-clear, that is, get approval for any voting change before it goes into effect, and that they did not do here. Now, Monterey County is one of three California counties that, because of previous court rulings on election problems, must have changes pre-approved by the Federal Department of Justice. The main change in this case, fewer polling places to save the county money. Late today, federal judge Jeremy Vogel declared, I don't think there can be an election without pre-clearance. The judge also added, this court is extremely reluctant to intervene in or disrupt the electoral process unless it is clearly compelled to do so. The judge scheduled another hearing two weeks from now. In the meantime, the Federal Department of Justice has been asked to approve these changes if it does not by August 29th. It is very possible the election could be delayed. That is certainly what Governor Davis would like to see, the election delayed till next March. But again, we won't know for certain till that next hearing in two weeks. Patrick Healy, Channel 4 News. Chuck and Michelle. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Just to get a little more confusing for you. A new release poll shows momentum is building now for the recall of Governor Gray Davis. The nonpartisan field poll found that 58 percent of likely California voters will vote for his recall. That's up from 51 percent last month. Also, his approval rating has now plunged to an all-time low, sitting at around 22 percent. The poll has a margin of error of plus or minus four percentage points. Here in Los Angeles, Governor Davis responded to a statement from challenger Ariana Huffington. Huffington has said she has her children in private schools because she doesn't want them to be guinea pigs in the public school system. I see wonderfully productive adults. I don't see any guinea pigs. I see some very successful young kids who are going to be very successful adults. The, the governor made his comments Students while attending a school pep rally at Hoover Street Elementary School celebrating recent test scores. At the governor's side today, L.A. Mayor Jim Hahn. Actor Rob Lowe is hoping to hop aboard the Arnold Schwarzenegger campaign bandwagon. The 39-year-old actor who plays a fictional or played a fictional White House aide on the West Wing is a Democrat. Lowe's exact role in the campaign is still being worked out. Schwarzenegger has reunited a number of Democrats, perhaps the most prominent billionaire Warren Buffett. President Bush has wrapped up a two-day visit to Southern California, raising cash for his re-election bid. The president toured the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area, highlighting his promise to upgrade American parks. After the visit, the president went to a fundraiser in Irvine, his second in two days. Channel 4's Vicki Vargas is live in Irvine now with the very latest. Vicki. Michelle, the president was here speaking to a noontime crowd. His speech lasted about 15 minutes, and in that time, he touched on everything from education reform to Medicare to frivolous lawsuits. But as you said, he came here to raise money, and he did just that. W. Bush. The agenda for President Bush, dollars and votes. I want you to remind your Republican friends, your Democrat friends, your independent friends, that this administration is one that is serving all the people of the United States of America. The president raised over a million dollars at lunch, serving chicken salad to some 500 Orange County Republicans. He's going to have to do a lot of campaigning, and he needs money to do that. The president steered clear of California's politics, saying this fundraiser was designed to keep him in the White House. Clearly, the, the presidential campaign throughout California has been focused on keeping the money in California to spend on the president. 
not on a recall, uh, not on any other election. Bush lies. Thousands die. Outside the Irvine Hyatt, a far different agenda. Nearly 200 anti-war protesters urging the commander in chief to pull all U.S. troops out of Iraq. We think he's a real warmonger. He is the, definitely the ogre of the 21st century. Police kept security tight, watching the street side activity. But after two hours of drums and demonstrations, a nearby office worker decided he'd had enough. We're trying to conduct business in these buildings. You people are idiots. Go home. Police did have to come in between that protester and those who were demonstrating, but there were no arrests. Live in Irvine, I'm Vicki Vargas, Channel 4 News. Thank you, Vicki. The cause of the largest power blackout in U.S. history remains a mystery, but power is gradually being restored. The blackout covered a huge slice of North America, affecting some 60 million people. And on day two, there are still problems in New York City, as you can see. Some lights are on, but not as many as normal. This is a live look at Manhattan right now. Millions of people there facing a second sweltering night without power. Look at the New York area on this satellite night image. It was taken before the blackout, and this is the image taken after the historic blackout. Investigators are now trying to track the source of the power failure that rippled across this part of the country. And early indications are focusing on a power plant somewhere in the Lake Erie region. In New York City, thousands of commuters tried to make their way back in for work. You know, you just got to go with the flow. People walked across the mile-long Brooklyn Bridge in a heat wave, while the Red Cross handed out water to weary walkers. It took us about 45 minutes to get over the bridge from our house. The subways are still down. Bus service is limited. Besides foot power, carpooling has become the most reliable way to get around. I loaded them up, 40 people. I am extremely proud of the people of New York. They have responded with incredible courage, incredible calm. In Detroit, Michigan, long lines formed at gas station. Drivers unable to fill up until the power comes back on. Just be patient. That's all. It's out of our control. At airports around the country and in Canada, frustration was setting in. Nearly 400 flights were canceled today. In New York and Detroit, inbound and outbound flights were still limited. Most of those without power in New York City and in Detroit, and officials are warning the lucky ones who do have electricity to conserve power as much as possible. Fallout from the blackout still affecting stranded travelers at LAX. You're looking at a live picture here of activity at the airport right now. Most flights are back on schedule, but hundreds of travelers are still scrambling to get reservations because their flights were canceled yesterday. And the scene is much the same at other major airports. Here's the Reagan Airport in Washington. Most flights were running on time this morning. And at Dallas-Fort Worth here, lines for rescheduled or delayed flights were very long. And folks here catching some sleep at Boston's Logan Airport as hundreds of travelers wait for a flight out. For up-to-the-minute information on the blackout, including any flight delays out of Southern California's airports, just check out our website at NBC4.tv. And a program reminder here to stay tuned for a special one-hour edition of the NBC Nightly News, anchored by Brian Williams tonight in New York City. That starts at its regular time at 6.30, one-hour special edition right here on NBC4. Now to the trial of actor Tom Sizemore. A jury has convicted him of physically abusing former Hollywood madam Heidi Fleiss. Channel 4's legal reporter Manny Madrano is live now with the very latest. Manny. Thank you, Michelle. We were in court for that verdict today. Bottom line, seven guilty counts, including corporal injury to the victim, making criminal threats, uh, annoying phone calls, and vandalism. Now, let me walk you through what happened in court today. And there you see Tom Sizemore in court with his lawyer, Michael Fitzgerald, not guilty on nine counts. This is after three days of deliberations. Now, just so you'll know, the actor Tom Sizemore turned down a one-year jail sentence plea deal, but now he faces up to four years in jail in light of his conviction on those seven counts. He did not testify in his own defense. Now, the victim here, of course, is Heidi Fleiss, the notorious Hollywood madam. Here you see her crying on the stand a few days ago when she testified, saying that she was subjected to a rain of terror by Tom Sizemore. The jury saw photos of some of her injuries. She cried on the stand. Now, she had her own previous criminal troubles, being in jail for 20 months for tax evasion. Listen closely now as we have the reaction by Tom Sizemore outside of court. I'd also like to thank um, my family for their continued loving support for this difficult period. And I'd like to thank all my fans who've uh, 
continue to uh, be fans. And I'd like to put this behind me now and do what I've always loved doing, which is to make movies and just continue on with my career and put this whole unfortunate episode behind me. And I wish uh, everyone involved the best. Thank you. Now, as I indicated right now, he faces up to four years in jail time. I spoke to the prosecutor, the city attorney. He was very adamant. He will be seeking jail time for Tom Sizemore, who has other legal problems. There is a second domestic violence case involving another alleged victim. That will be resolved also in the coming fall. Again, he returns to court October 2 for his official sentencing. Reporting from the courthouse by LAX, I'm Manny Madrano, Channel 4 News. Thank you, Manny. Still ahead, he looked like a local cop, even had a fake police car. Tonight, the police are learning that this guy could be part of an even bigger crime ring. Warning coming up. Then, brand new homes for $200,000. How they're being distributed and where they're at. And a massive recall of minivans because the fuel tank could cause a fire. Important information. Hi. Well, we're we going to have this heat over the weekend and, and, and the thunderstorms in the mountains and deserts. I, I have the answers to those questions on my exclusive AccuWeather Skyscan forecast coming up in minutes. Mario. Chris, thank you. Also coming up, Phil Jackson about to sign a new deal with the Lakers. We'll have the details. Plus, could former USC star oh. Mark Pryor beat the Dodgers for the second Got time it. in a week? We'll have the answer in a few minutes. Dodgers get a run. Two hits. It out-accelerated Honda Accord in the quarter mile. It out-handled Audi A6 in the slalom. On the road course, it surpassed 14 other sports sedans with flying colors. Introducing the 2004 Grand Prix Comp G, the best performing sports sedan in its class. Go to Pontiac.com for details. Then get price information and take a test drive at your Pontiac dealer. Check this out. KFC does the impossible. Gets families together again. They're all in there together. They're talking together. They're laughing together. How did she do that? Get any eight-piece meal or larger of the Colonel's Finger Lickin' Good Chicken at regular price with your choice of homestyle sides and freshly baked biscuits and get a free apple pie for dessert. Get the family together as only KFC can. You get the kids, I'll get the KFC. We're going to eat together. Together? Introducing Bank of America's new Mini Visa Credit Card. Is that really a credit card? Oh, hey, that's a cute card. Thanks. It's really small. Get out of here. Really easy. Wow, what a great little card. And really secure. With total security protection. Qué bonita tarjeta. So now, when you get our card for your wallet, there's a mini card for your keychain. What a great little card. Only from Bank of America. Higher standards. The Toyota dealers of Southern California make it easy for you to win a trip for two to New York City to see the final Today Show concert of the season. Just watch the Today Show in the Toyota Summer Concert Series on NBC4. You could be a VIP guest of NBC in the Toyota dealers of Southern California at Rockefeller Plaza for the final concert of the year. To enter, log on to NBC4.tv and check out the Toyota Summer Concert Series calendar. And don't miss your Toyota dealers summer drive sales event going on now at all 57 Southern California Toyota dealers. The KNBC local broadcast sponsor of the Toyota Summer Concert Series. Southern California Toyota dealers. We make it easy. Three days ago, Channel 4's Mary Parks was on this broadcast, and she was telling us about a man who was posing as a cop and robbing drivers after making a traffic stop. Well, tonight, Mary has some new information about this suspect who now says he's part of a phony cop ring. It was here at this intersection where a phony policeman was busted after offering to help real cops with a traffic accident. Sheriff's investigators now say that imposter was part of a crime ring masquerading as peace officers. We suspect that there are um, six, maybe more, um, and uh, they are calling themselves the posse. Convicted sex offender Jesse Wagner admitted to deputies his role in the ring, claiming the posse of six has been falsely arresting people for over a year. The victims that we do have were all Mexican nationals, and apparently he makes a traffic stop on the Mexican nationals, giving the assumption that he is a peace officer, pulls them over, pulls them out of their vehicles, and then goes through their vehicles as well as their persons and takes their money, their wallets, and anything of value. Wagner was arrested driving a police-style car with a cage in the back seat. The phony unit had red lights, sirens, and radios. Since stories of Wagner's arrest first appeared on television and in newspapers, the Sheriff's Department has been flooded with phone calls from potential victims and law enforcement agencies. 
Working for Bulldog Bail Bonds in Lake Elsinore, Wagner fooled real deputies who never checked his ID. He booked bail jumpers into jails in Riverside, San Bernardino, Orange, and Los Angeles counties. If you suspect that they're not legitimate, call your local law enforcement agency. Mary Parks, Channel 4 News. Southern California Edison workers are getting the last customers back online in La Puente tonight after a big power outage there today. Several hundred people lost electricity this afternoon when some power lines came down near Curly Street and Azusa Way. About two dozen businesses and two apartment complexes were temporarily evacuated, including a small mini mall. Investigators are still trying to determine why those power lines came down. It's a virus that has attacked computers all over the world, and tonight we have learned that it has closed down one Southland City Hall. Plus, Fritz is next with your weekend weather forecast. Any record-breaking temperatures predicted? We'll find out when we come back. This Skyscan forecast is sponsored by Hyundai. When your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. It's the winning season for the Hyundai Santa Fe. One of the fastest growing SUVs in its class. Protected by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. $1,300 less than a Ford Escape when comparably equipped. And now get an extra $1,000 cash back. The Hyundai Santa Fe starting at just $17,634 after $1,000 cash back. You're the winner at the Hyundai winning season clearance. Going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Wix Furniture presents... A financing tip. The word accrue means to add up. When you finance at other stores, the interest usually accrues. It adds up. You don't pay it now. You pay it later. Lots of it. At Wix, however, you buy now, save more, put no money down, make no payments, and pay no interest for 18 months. 18 months from now. The interest doesn't add up. The interest is free. You don't pay it. Wix does. So to accrue or not to accrue? Not. It's Summer Drive at your GMC dealer, and we're exceeding your expectations with 4,000 total cash back on every 2003 GMC SUV, every Yukon, and every Envoy. Professional-grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Get 0% APR for 60 months for qualified buyers on all 2003 GMC SUVs, or get 4,000 total cash back. For the best selection of 2003s, see your participating GMC dealers. Tonight, the story of the massive blackout of 2003, the search for the cause, the fallout, and just some of the stories of how millions made it through the night. It's ahead on NBC Nightly News. Seems like everybody's got a to-do list. Just get your priorities in order. First things first, the 2003 Honda clearance. It only happens once a year, and it's gone before you know it. Now lease a 2003 Civic LX sedan for $159 a month for 48 months. Life can wait. First things first. Now for your money. Hundreds of families are waiting anxiously tonight to find out if they are among the lucky lottery winners who will be moving into new homes. As Channel 4's David Cruz reports, they'll be moving into 22 of the rare affordable housing units in Ventura County. Leticia Silva says she wishes she could afford to buy a house in Ventura County for her and her six small children. She's rented for 14 years along the street in Oxnard's La Colonia, near Cesar Chavez's childhood home. She says there are many of us who can't buy because our income is so low. So is that of many of these farm workers, some of them second and third generation residents of Ventura County, even their fields now being squeezed out by new homes. There's no more fields, there's no more work. That's why now 22 homes under $200,000 going up on this side in El Rio are being sold this weekend through a closed lottery to families who pre-registered and who make less than $54,000 a year, residents with few choices. People are doubling up in housing. Young people are living with their parents. Um, or people are moving on, and um, it's making it very hard on our county. Yet, nearby neighborhoods in Ventura County, like this one, refuse to include lower price homes in their projects. So do some cities. Companies coming in, searching to actually be here, and then where do we put the workers? So for some, areas like La Colonia may be their only option until that's gone too. In Oxnard, David Cruz, Channel 4 News.
The blackout in the Northeast didn't stop the stock market from opening today, but trading was life. The Dow Jones rose at a modest 11 points to close at 93.21. The Nasdaq up, edged up about a point and a half to 17.02. So what do you say, Fritz? Is it going to be hot this weekend? Yes. <laughs> no change. We are stuck in this hot, muggy pattern. Many areas up over 100. We'll show you where some of our cities sit right now. Even at sunset, still warm. Here's a great shot of the jetty off in the marina. And hopefully you can get to places like this over the weekend to be as cool as you can. Here are the numbers. We had a high downtown today at SC of 95. Last night's low, 70. We'll have that same low again tonight. Right now, 86, 42% relative humidity. The pressure is falling. We have variable winds up to about 7 miles an hour downtown. 85 and 66, the normals. Sun up and set set. Sun set at 614 and 740. Here's some real-time temperature measurements from three weather net sites. It still is 96 degrees at Bryn Mawr Elementary in Loma Linda. Northridge at Pinecrest School. Still 92. And and 89 at Royal High School out in Simi. The heat and the thunderstorms coming from the same source. And we will tell you, we've checked Skyscan 4 street level radar over the last half hour or so. Things are settling down really quickly out in the deserts. Not even worth a mention. There's that low counterclockwise flow around it gives us an offshore flow, which is warming us up. And the western edge of this area of moisture giving us our thunderstorms inland again today in both the mountains and the eastern deserts settling down tonight. But the potential is there for you to get any activity like that over the weekend anytime any place east of the mountain ranges so be advised for most of us a partly sunny weekend inland areas mountains and deserts uh, deserts thunderstorms will remain possible tomorrow smog gets a notch worse than it was today the red areas san fernando santa clarita valley san bernardino riverside area banning down to hemet elsinore all the red that's unhealthy not just for sensitive people but for everyone do your exercise in the morning or after dusk Stay out of the heat of the afternoon when the smog is the worst, regardless of who you are. Mid and upper 60s, close to 70 overnight. Valencia, 70. Rancho Cucamonga, 70 degrees, 70 also in Rialto and Highland. A warm, warm night. Mid and upper 70s on the coastal side. All the red areas, 100 plus. Rancho Cucamonga, Rialto, into the deserts again, up over 100. Here's the five-day. And I'll tell you, it'll be until the middle or latter part of next week before we see any cooling not even cooling, just a drop in temperature. So it appears visually as if it's cooler, but it won't feel like it. Hmm. You had a lot in there. Everything except snow. You just no. about covered all the bases. I'll have that Wind, at 11 o'clock. Rain, a <laughs> little bit of everything. Thanks, Fritz. Okay. Now let's go to Colleen and see what's coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. Hi, Chuck. New at 11. Dining, dancing, drinking. The newest Zagat list of hot spots is out. And yes, we have it. The best in local nightlife, live at 11. Also new at 11 tonight, the problems are not over yet. The latest on the massive blackout and some of the difficulties still facing those folks back east and here at home. Well, those stories and all the late breaking news tonight after Boomtown on Southern California's number one newscast, the Channel 4 News at 11. Back to you. Coming up, it involves thousands of minivans on the street. A big recall tonight on a vehicle that can be dangerous. What you need to know next. But first, a Southland City Hall closed down because of a computer virus. It's two days of nonstop family entertainment. The California Kids Fair is coming to the Pomona Fairplex August 23rd and 24th. Bring a used book and get a dollar off admission. For more information, log on to NBC4.tv or call 866-444-EXPO. This fall, six women get a second chance to change their lives. I'm really open to anything. But can they do it while living under the same roof? Women don't want to deal with me. I don't care about anybody but myself. Starting over. Premiering September 8th on NBC4. is a treasure. Trésor by Lancôme Paris. Your fall gift of beauty with any $25 Lancôme purchase at Robinson's May. The Hyundai Elantra, a comparison. More standard features than a Toyota Corolla LE. 
All for over $1,900 less when comparably equipped. And only the Elantra is protected by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Looks like we have a winner. Test drive the Hyundai Elantra. Nicely equipped for just $11,939 at your Hyundai dealer. Don't waste money on a lease. Own a 2003 Elantra for just $189 a month through September 2nd at your Hyundai dealer. Channel 4 Sports is sponsored by Hyundai. When your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. This week's attack on computers by what they call a rogue worm continues to slow down business in San Bernardino County. In fact, it hit computers here at the county's office complex on Tuesday, the same day that millions of commuters, uh, computers that is, around the world were also attacked. Some residents still can't pay their taxes in San Bernardino, register to vote, or complete other county transactions online. The virus attacks a flaw in Microsoft's operating Windows program. Toyota is recalling nearly 35,000 minivans. The fuel tank is prone to damage and could cause a fire. The recall involves the Toyota Sienna minivans from the 2004 model year. Toyota began selling the minivans in January. Now, part of the Sienna's fuel tank was damaged during severe front-end crash tests. Toyota dealers will replace the fuel tank for free. Sports is coming right up, and yes, it was another tough day for Mr. Woods at the PGA Championship. Mario will be here to go us and tell us about it. Birdies have been few. Automobile Magazine All-Star, five years in a row. Winner, $35,000 to $40,000 category, AAA Auto Guide. Since the current BMW 5 Series was first introduced, we've found very little to improve on. And apparently, many others would agree. Car and Driver Magazine, 10 best, six years in a row. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. There's one word for NBC Fridays. Explosive. I said hallelujah! Starting at 9, 8 central with Law & Order SVU. Friday's number one drama. Please stop! Secure the perimeter. Then at 10, 9 central, <laughs> Boomtown comes to Friday night. I won't let anyone harm that little girl. The most critically acclaimed show of the year. This ain't over yet. Law & Order SVU and Boomtown every Friday on NBC. <laughs> I'm Tom Brokaw. When news happens, it happens in your neighborhood, your city, or half a world away. We'll get next time. That's why it's so important to get out there where it's happening, to get the story behind the story. Getting firsthand perspective, asking the tough questions. That's what it takes to connect you to the world. That's why having a team as experienced as NBC News and the Channel 4 News is so important. Trust experience. Turn to 4 first. It's Summer Drive at your GMC dealer, and we're exceeding your expectations with 4000 total cash back on every 2003 GMC SUV, every Yukon, and every Envoy. Professional-grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Get 0% APR for 60 months for qualified buyers on all 2003 GMC SUVs, or get 4000 total cash back. For the best selection of 2003s, see your participating GMC dealers. Fred's off. Here's Mario. We got Laker news with the start of training camp just a month and a half away. Laker coach Phil Jackson is close to signing a two-year contract extension worth $16 million. He has one year left on his original five-year deal. Jackson, along with Lakers owner Jerry Buss, are scheduled to meet next week, at which time a deal should be finalized. Baseball now from Chicago. Masokita made his first major league start today for the Dodgers, allowing only two runs on five hits against the Cubs. Both runs driven in by Sammy Sosa, who had three hits in the game, including this double to left in the first that scored Kenny Lofton when Paul Aduka couldn't hold on to the ball. Former USC star Mark Pryor, who beat the Dodgers last Sunday at the stadium, pitched another gem. The only run he allowed was to Aduka in the eighth, who singled home Mike Kincaid, cutting the Cubs' lead in half. But with two on and one out, Dodgers couldn't score the tying run. Sean Green popped up to short, while Jeremy Burnett struck out. Cubs won 2-1 as Pryor went the distance for his 11th win of the season. Hockey Mighty Ducks today extended the contracts of their entire coaching staff through the 2004 season. Of course, Mike Babcock led the Ducks to their first ever Stanley Cup Finals last season. Chipping to golf in the second round of the PGA Championship. We know who this little cutie is rooting for, but to her disappointment, Tiger continued to struggle with his putter. He shot a 72 and is now 6 over for the tournament. 
nine shots off the lead. Shot of the day by Stuart Sink on the par four fifth. From about 130 yards away, the ball hit the green and watch it back up right into the cup for a birdie. Unfortunately, Sink didn't make the cut. What about first round leader, Phil Mickelson? Well, lefty shot a five over 75 as his chip shot found the bunker. He's now one over for the tournament and three shots behind the leader, Sean McKeel. But the man to watch out for is Masters champion, Mike Weir, who's playing some steady golf. He is at one under and should make a charge over the weekend. Let's now head to the Czech Republic where Australian Casey Stoner takes a tumble during qualifying for this weekend's Czech Motocross Grand Prix. Unfortunately, he separated his shoulder in the crash, but somehow was still able to clinch the second fastest time of the day. So I guess you can say a nasty mishap with a somewhat happy ending. The blackout that has crippled the Northeast is still causing problems in the sports world. Tonight's exhibition game in New York between the U.S. Olympic qualifying team and Puerto Rico has been postponed until Sunday afternoon. And finally, something you have to see in Oregon where the AAA Portland Beavers held Harley Davidson night with the goal to have the most Harley riders throwing out the first pitch. And by a look of things, I guess you could say it was mission accomplished. Yeah, <laughs> baseball and bikers, a match made for the diamond. Uh huh. I could see you there must on have a been Harley. A mess after they all left. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably took a little time cleaning up. <laughs> all right. All right. Coming up next, they have a special one-hour edition of NBC Nightly News with uh, Brian Williams anchoring it from New York for the vacationing Tom Brokaw. Mm hmm. And of course, stay tuned for the Channel 4 News at 11 tonight. We hope you have a good evening.